So will Corpus Christi run out of water? That's the question we're confronting in this new series. The stakes have never been higher as the region is experiencing a shrinking water supply. Combined lake levels at Choke Canyon and Lake Corpus Christi have plunged to a historic low at 15.8%. Corpus Christi has been under water restrictions for three years and under stage three water restrictions for five months. Now, without big rains, the city warns that we could go into a level one water emergency by December of 2026 and run out of our western water supplies by April of 2027. Now, over the next few days, we will look at where our water really goes who uses it and whether solutions like desalination can come in time. Our Bill Churchwell begins tonight with a look at one of the quietest threats to our region's future, evaporation. Bill. Data our team has collected is helping paint a picture of evaporation. It's an invisible drain. It's also one of the biggest factors in our water crisis. For most of his life, Rogers Weathers has been casting a line from the banks of Choke Canyon, but he's never witnessed this. Have you ever seen the lake this low? This is my first time in almost 30 years. This is my first time. I've never seen it this low in my life. Choke Canyon Reservoir is critically low. We used to have to fish up there on top of the rock. Entire islands and trees that were once underwater now exposed. When the lake level is up, we would actually be in water right now. Correct, yeah, yeah. This will be completely you know, underwater. Out of five public boat ramps, Park Superintendent Jose Uribe says this is the only one that remains open. It's just been dropping little by little, little by little. You know, in the last year and a half, that's really when uh, drastically has dropped a whole lot more. The water level is the lowest it has ever been since it was dammed back in the 1980s. And now look, it's, it's sickening because I believe the hotter it's gonna get, the lower it's gonna get. He's not wrong. The largest consumer of our area's lakes isn't cities or industry, it's evaporation. And Alan, y'all looked at numbers dating back all the way to 2010. Yes, on average, the evaporative loss between Choke Canyon and Lake Corpus Christi per year. That number is nearly 160,000 acre feet. We compared this number to how much we consume on average per year in Nueces and San Patricio counties, and you can see that the evaporative loss is way more than we consume. This is the watershed. Dr. Pat Fitzpatrick is with the Atmospheric Science Program on campus of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. On average, it's 50 inches per year from the lake, so you have to have at least 50 inches of input, which is usually from the watershed, from the river system that's coming in to just keep it at a normal rate. Evaporation is mostly consistent, but gets worse as temperatures rise. Corpus Christi saw some of its hottest years on record in the last 15 years, and 2024 was the hottest. We might have slightly more evaporation rates than maybe 10 or 15 years ago in a global warming scenario. But for the most part, it should be about the same. If temperatures keep rising, can Choke Canyon and Lake Corpus Christi remain viable water sources? Evaporative loss is a huge part. We sat down with city manager Peter Zanoni and Corpus Christi Waters, Drew Molly. There are times in the summer when we're seeing 150 million gallons a day of evaporative loss. He says that's more than our total water demand of our entire city and the region. City leaders floated a proposal two months ago to cover Lake Corpus Christi with floating solar panels to generate electricity and reduce evaporation. This is something that's on our, on our plans to look at. But Zanoni says that option would be difficult because the public uses both lakes. Meantime, fishermen like Weathers remain hopeful, but say that recreation, like everything else, is drying up. You can't even launch a boat down here no more. The water's depleting, it's gone, you know, so what are we going to do? Over the next week, we will hear from city leaders, meteorologists, and weather or water experts about what's happening beneath the surface and what the city is doing to make up for the loss. Back to you. Incredible and very important reporting there, Bill. We appreciate yeah. that and we look forward to watching the rest of this Water Woe series, which by the way, also part of that Water Woe series, Chief Meteorologist Alan Holt, along with meteorologist Kristen Walla, took a look at those numbers. Yeah, here's a breakdown of what's happening in our watershed. 
we poured over the watershed data. We wanted to see exactly where our water is going, what it's doing. We started with percent of average rainfall, and through all of this, we looked at between 2010 and 2024. So in that time frame, watershed Choke Canyon Lake Corpus Christi got 91% of average rainfall. Yeah, so what that translates to for the western watershed is an average inflow of over 230,000 acre feet per year. That's inflow. We also looked at evaporation. What's going out on average over 157,000 acre feet per year. We do the math inflow minus evaporation on average. We have just under 75,000 acre feet available per year. That's in the western watershed. Then we looked out east. Lake Texana via the Mary Roads pipeline. That number up to 43,000 acre feet per year between 2010 and 2024, leaving us with an average available amount of water in that time of just over 117,000 acre feet. Yeah, so that's what we have available to use on average. Here's our consumption numbers for San Patricio in Nueces counties alone in 2022, around 130,000 acre feet per year. Comparing that to our average available, that means on average we're in a deficit by over 10,000 acre feet per year. Thank you, Alan and Kristen, for that very helpful and robust breakdown. Now, today's announcement could potentially change some of those numbers. It is something that our weather team is closely monitoring. We'll keep you updated on air and online.